this week. <laughs> God, now oh, I know, now I know what Ryan. Up now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... Well, it's just all my fun. Like I, I was gonna say, we are assaulting a cross, and I'm like, no, that's not what he wrote. Okay. <laughs> Second fucking take, all right? Yeah, I know, Brian. If you're you're gonna be listening to the fucking bloopers at oh, one point, no, he's gonna hear can, this at the top of the episode. That's what it's gonna be. Yeah, relish in your fucking in your in your laughter. All right. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to Scuttlebutt, the War Movie Review Podcast. We're happy to have you with us as we take a look at films from the dawn of cinema to today. We aim to provide a raw and unapologetic review of each film's cinematography, historical accuracy, and delivery. In the process of analysis, certain details will be revealed. These spoilers are only divulged to ensure a fair assessment of each film. This week, we assault across the Asanzo with Francesco Rossi's 1970 Italian Great War epic, Many Wars Ago. As always. As always. <laughs> <laughs> fuck okay he didn't he didn't type that i don't know i'm like a fucking news anchor man i don't know what to fucking say yeah no it's me uh so um this week we're joined by myself mike b mike a yo yo and nate good job mike b actually not no sarcasm that's actually a really good job i no, i do this is <laughs> why you're an, doing it i'm not so don't worry like this is why just give me an yeah, effort, yeah, effort. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, all yeah. i request but anyway um Brian has uh, got some stuff that came up this week, so he's not going to be joining us, but we're still going to deliver uh, on this film, which was very interesting, to say the least, yes. in my opinion. Yes, and it wasn't, like, bad. It's not... Uh, no, no, not yeah, in a bad no. way. No, uh, it was just to, different. To put, to put a timestamp you know? on this, Hyena Road just released today, and uh, re-editing that, man, that movie made me angry. <laughs> That, uh, it sucks. Do you still yeah. feel that way? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Still, no, yeah. no, it, no. We're we're still at. I'd rather smash my nuts with a wooden mallet status. <laughs> to, to quote to quote you from for Midway. Yeah. yeah. The, no. Pound them flat. Yeah, pound them flat. <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah. Pound them yeah. flat. Yes. We are. Yeah. All the juice we is are, out we of are it. Pan, <laughs> we are pancake status on my nuts on hyena red. So, yeah. No. It, it. I. I. Uh. But to get off that trash fire. Fuck. Um. No, this movie it was it was really interesting. So so going so going off of everything that we've been doing, um, this was a big breath of fresh air, and it reminded me kind of like how we were surprised mm -hmm. with uh, Ungentlemanly Act. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yep. I had the same feelings. Um, yeah. Yeah. These, like, same. These like hidden gems that you just you know uh, that, that surprise you. Yeah. yeah. And I've never I've never heard of this movie ever. Me neither. Oh yeah. me either. It was yeah. it was it was really like I was I was now I I will admit I watched it for free on YouTube with the you know uh warp stabilization to make sure it was never get taken I, down. Did you do the same thing, Mike? I watched the exact okay, same thing. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. So yeah, I actually I because the subs were not working for me, the subtitles were not working for yeah. me on YouTube. I was like, Brian, do you have a link for this? Like in a totally legit anywhere yeah, yeah, else yeah. streaming service. You know, and um, he's like, uh, no, but I just watched it on Prime and it's on Amazon yeah. Prime currently oh, yeah, when, yeah, when yeah, we're making yeah. this. And so I paid the two bucks. I rented it. I'm like, it's either going to be worth it or not. But for the podcast, it's worth it. Um, it was a lot more clear than the version on YouTube, yes. like yes. picture wise. So I actually it was worth the two bucks for me. I don't give a shit. I'm going to spend two bucks on dumber shit. This I did not regret spending two bucks. Just kind of a little teaser. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did not regret spending the two bucks to rent I, it and watch I, I, it. But, I, will, uh, I will say it, it yeah. boosts if 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 it, if it holds anything to it. If Mike A and myself are saying it's really good on a warp stabilization zoomed in mm -hmm. shot with subtitles that kind of worked, kind of didn't. I I and I, I'm, I'm 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 going to tell you right now, it's going to be high for me. So yeah, well now that I know it's on Prime, yeah. I'm probably going to go watch it again yeah. the right way. So because yeah, yeah, I, it's I actually it on that warp stabilizer yeah. fucking thing. Yeah. And I feel sorry for you because, like, it's 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 so it's actually pretty fucking good. Yeah. Um, for especially being 1970, so uh, an ungentlemanly act was 92, correct? correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 92. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you've got you know 22 years of difference there, or no, yeah, 22 yeah. years, and I, I I can math sometimes, mm -hmm. um, but this 
so when I saw the date on it, to be honest, completely honest with you, when I saw the date and I saw like the title and everything and what it was about, I was like, okay, cool. It's going to be another fucking sixties and seventies war movie. Yeah. Which in some parts, some respects some, it was, some of but, it was, but yeah, like the sound effects and shit, but the macro level shit was actually really well done. And there was, um, obviously we're going to get into, I have this, oh, sorry. I hit the, hit the mic. We're going to get into uh, the similarities and the actual historical accuracy of uh, Stanley Kubrick's yeah. uh, Paths of Glory, which we've already yes, done, yeah. right? But this is the same year, different country, different scenario, different front, different people, but very similar stuff historically speaking. So we'll get into that. And it had a lot of uh, the same kind of themes and, 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 and echoes of that. But it was still its own film. Like it wasn't just a direct ripoff of Paths of Glory. No. You know, there was, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it, it was, yeah, it was. And that's kind of when I started to see the theme, I'm like, oh God, are they going to, are they going to fucking just rip it off? They that's did not. what I thought was happening. I, I was like, oh my God, is this going to be Italian Paths of Glory? You know? Right. Yeah. It's- and then, then you get to it and it's like, oh no, it's actually original. And it's actually keeping with the historical accuracy because uh, like Brian's, Brian told me it was based on a memoir, right? an Italian soldier's memoir or Italian officer. I don't know who it was, but somebody uh, wrote this memoir and then it became a film. I, I'm sure it was a book first, of course, but like, uh, and that's why it made it, it made it so much different yet similar because this did these events in this film actually happened. So that was really cool. So um, what uh, Mike, what did you think just overall, like, your first few minutes in like, or I will say like 20 minutes of watching this. Okay. What did you think? Well, I, I love the, the, the tone and like the, the, the overall look of it and everything like that. I felt, it, it felt very cold to me. Like the movie just felt so cold, um, which I thought was great. And the atmosphere and everything like that. Um, I saw what was going on, you know, pretty early on where he says, Oh, you know, who, who uh, did that, you know, who, who's did that shoot that soldier right now. And then the guy has to kind of like, fake it and make you know all this stuff up i thought okay this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting yeah. but i was like okay i'm getting you know paths of glory vibes here with this general character i don't remember if he was a general or or what i think he was a general um i, the, yeah, the I think he lead, was a general yeah right the main leader of the army you know um and uh so that's what i was getting but uh i uh yeah i just i love the uh the the, the feel of everything um I uh, the, the the trenches and all that stuff. Like I say, it felt so cold to me, and um, just the relentless uh, battles that were taking place. So relentless that at one point the enemy even stops and says, "Stop running into our machine guns! Like, what are you doing?" Um, yeah, that's a yeah, <laughs> yep. That part I loved, um, and uh, yeah, I I mean I only watched it once, um, which was like a couple weeks ago. I want to watch it again though, but uh, I I would definitely recommend it. I thought it was very well done, and I love the feel of it. Mm-hmm. Nate, um, yeah, I mean, like there were a ton of um really interesting moments that you know for me I I I I I haven't watched a lot of World War One movies. It's it's um it's actually a a, a like a theater I don't necessarily want to watch in movies also most world war movies suck that's ass. why I, that's i'm just gonna why say that right now say was it and it's because most of them suck ass and they don't have the best track record yeah yeah it's just it's just and it's just and it's always like the same kind of theme and the tone and everything so so going into this i'm like okay like what's this gonna be and you know again you know you had mentioned the same kind of feeling as past glory and i was going okay is it gonna go that way where we have inept you know, leadership all the way down to where guys ground to make the call and the privates and the corporals and the sergeants are all the wicked shafted, you know, through the whole entire movie. And, um, you know, it was very, very interesting to go in and see, you know, not and necessarily a tr- there was a trench, but not traditional trench. It wasn't the Psalm trench kind of stuff. It's completely different. It's 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 um the mountains on the border of i believe what austria and italy 
what is now Slovenia, Slovenia. Okay. from what I understand from what I understand okay. so yeah it's it's in like yeah it's way north and east okay. in Italy yeah, su- super rocky terrain. yeah yeah and that's yes. kind of like you know that that's 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 that my my history knowledge is I know that happened but I don't know that much about that era and that location and I know that was horrendous mountain fighting horrendous from what i understand and so going in and having a movie based on that you know i went into this cold i didn't i didn't look up anything on wikipedia i didn't look up on anything on a summary or cliff notes uh you know brian threw us the title and that was what i went with and uh you know it was very very interesting to you know see to see how that kind of shaped up and how that worked and so it was just very surprising to see what they could do within that within that location and that and that involvement and it just was really really cool and for me personally i didn't get all of the context with language because i was watching it on a on a way that just wasn't giving me 100 percent accurate information yeah but, uh, yeah, but like yeah. you know the fact that i didn't have to have that and I could still no. follow it and love it and really, really understand it. And like, you know, I could get the gist of what was happening if one or two lines didn't come out in English. So, mm. you know, that alone should say something about this movie. And I really, really enjoyed it. And, you know, it's it's in a 1970s film, you kind of expect this cadence to happen. And it I wasn't getting that same cadence. That's normally like the, the normal no. kind of like drudge of 1970s mm-hmm. war movies, you know, in particular. So it, I was really, really liking it. And um. I guess for me to mention one of my favorite, one of my really funny or not funny, sorry. One of my favorite parts, funny for me, cause I had never seen this or heard of it. I mean, I heard of armor, especially in mountain fighting in world war one, right? But the suits right. of armor, they made these like, yeah, that know, they just walk yeah, these like, you know, tectonic knights kind of thing, you know, <laughs> like it was, yeah, they look well, like lighthouses. It, yeah. Well, and so, so that, that, that to me, from what I know, was a little bit kind of overdone. They didn't just walk out there. Right. They would like use them. And so there's a lot of raids that happen at night. Yeah. You know, for obvious reasons. But um, no, the actual introducing that and showing that the Italians were actually experimenting with well, and, and all sides actually were experimenting with medieval armor and how to incorporate that into what is now the modern warfare, because right. it's so much different. It's very it's very ranged, very distanced. Um, and they they legitimately tried the Italians especially they came up with some weird shit and I mean Battlefield One of course if you go look at that but like there's more to it than Battlefield right. One like they the Americans the Brits the French the Germans the Austro-Hungarians were all trying to figure out okay how can we just make guys kind of invincible right to arrows is what they kind of were the generals were thinking of this as like arrows you know like. It seems that way, even if they weren't, it seems like they thought that bullets were arrows. So it's like, okay, let's just put these guys in a shitload of really heavy, cumbersome armor and have them just walk towards with, the enemy. And these with, bullets are like, with like angles what? of deflection too. Yeah. Yeah, sure. But like that, that, that doesn't no. happen with fucking no, I with know. bullets. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, so those helmets that they actually used in this film, I don't know that the medieval inspiration, cause I'm not an expert on that, but I know for a fact they were so tall and so big, they were made to look ominous, right? Which is actually still a thing in World War One. You're made to look ominous. The the bigger you are, the the, the more scary your shit looks. It's exactly. Um, but practically, like any engineer, or anybody like that would or any soldier would be like, Yeah, one bullet's gonna go on there and send a bunch of fucking frag into this guy's head, <laughs> yeah. and he's gonna die. <laughs> and one even if it doesn't, even if it's not a direct hit, it's just gonna send a bunch of shit into his head. And it's going to be hot. He can't see jack shit. And that's unfortunately with a lot of guys, not a lot of guys, but like some guys uh, from all sides died because these fucking idiots that were never at the front and never experienced this shit were like, well, let's just use armor. Mm -hmm. It worked in the medieval times. It can work now. Let's just use the same fucking materials. It's like, well, you have these things called high powered fucking, you know, projectiles very fast, very small metallic projectiles that can go right through that. Like what the fuck? Yeah. It's uh, you know, it's a clash of generations. I, I, uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I think Brian even mentioned at one point, we were talking about world war one. He said like, this was the world war one. This was like the, the very, very end of like the gilded age of warfare. Correct. You know, and it's Correct. like stuff like that really shows that. 
and um, well, and even even if they were smart enough to like not think that there were arrows, like even so, musket balls, even rifled musket balls, mm-hmm. might have velocity to punch through steel mm-hmm. as just you know solid lead projectiles. But when you jacket those bullets with copper, which is a, ha- a harder metal than lead, mm-hmm. and they're moving at a velocity that's very fast compared to a black or a musket or a black powder projectile in general. Even with the, with the Mauser 1870 rifle, like the 11 millimeter cartridge, it's still black powder. It's still a big fucking heavy projectile made of lead moving at not a super fast speed, but it's fast enough to fucking kill you. Mm-hmm. Like if you're not wearing any armor, but I think that's what these guys, and like you said, it's a class of generations because a lot of the, the, the officers and the, like the higher up officers had fought in the Franco Prussian war. Mm-hmm. You know, or or had experience around that time in 1870, 1880, all that stuff. Even some British officers, you know, that were in uh, Africa, Battle of Rooks Drift, you know, all that shit. Very heavy, slow, slower moving lead projectiles versus extremely fast moving, smaller uh, caliber, uh, copper jacketed or metal jacketed, cupra nickel in some cases bullets that can go through steel like it's not nobody's business right it's not just gonna yeah it's just gonna fucking hit them it's gonna go through did i just did i just so. hear cooper nick cooper nickel Co- cooper, cooper nickel, nickel? Okay. yep uh yeah so it's like cupra is like when when you're describing you're, you're, copper mixed okay with so something. you're not saying copper all weird in your wisconsin accent that's okay. no, no 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 cooper nickel is like it's like um oh what the fuck i can't think of another example right now but like yeah, it's copper and nickel, but like nickel is is mixed in with there to make it a little bit stronger. It's more gotcha. of an alloy. It's more yeah. silver. But um, uh, cupra nickel means like copper mixed with something okay. else. In this case, nickel. Cool. So it, well, you know, to, to kind so, of jump off of what you said, it's like you know, there's such a huge technological. That's not a word. Technological, technological gap yep. within within you know the two from the last war to World War One. Yes. Know, in just yes. just I mean you know machine guns alone. We're just a concept. Oh yeah, you know the pr- the the war previous, or whatever the the last major one would have been. Um, I think what it would have been the Gatling gun, maybe. Yeah, that that came out during the Civil yeah. War, the American Civil War. Uh, but like that, still it was devastating. But again, there's a lot of maintenance, and it's also slow, slow moving, moving, very heavy position, large projectile, very yep. cumbersome yep, to yep. move and cumbersome to load, <clears throat> and prone to malfunctions. And, and the projectile itself is like very soft. slow moving, soft. heavy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In, in, soft. And compared it's lead. to the Cooper nickel, you know, Cooper. Yeah, you can just say jacketed. <laughs> you can just say jacketed. No, just say jacketed. Yeah, it, yep, jacketed, jacketed bullets. But like, yeah. no, the jacketed bullet that actually does make a difference because that can go yeah. through armor. And then, and like, and then, what do you think armor no, piercing exactly. is? No, exactly. No, I, I, and then, and yeah. then you also yep. have, um, and correct, you're, you're, you're a lot, whole lot knowledgeable of this time frame and the development of weaponry at this point, but wouldn't locking mm-hmm. lugs rifles be new too? No, they were not new. Uh, those happened in the late 1880s. Okay. Like yeah. the, the ones we know today. Like, so you've got the 1889, um, but, Belgian but, 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 but major wars though. That's what I mean. No, no, no. Okay. So oh, let's just, let's just nip okay. that in the bud too. Is like. So major wars from 1880, we'll say eight, mm-hmm. right? Until 1914, major wars, not really. Wars, yes. Yeah. Smaller Skirmish, wars like uh, that were fought, skirmishes. like the Russo-Japanese yeah, yeah, yeah. War of 1905, yeah. um, the, 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 the U.S., the Spanish-American War, yep. right? You know, 1898 to 1901, right, yeah, yeah. or if you ask some, 1909, yeah. but whatever. Um the the uh, banana wars uh, like there was wars going on with but they weren't to the scale that the first world war ended up right being yeah yeah with all these munitions or all the all these arms and munitions in one place at one yeah. time and creating devastating Would, results wouldn't the equivalent of that have been the napoleonic wars what do you mean by the equivalent Just in of? the scale the well in Europe. Well, in Europe, yes. Um, but it was also fought differently. Like, so the Napoleonic Wars, like, you had, you were still using flintlock muskets, right? right? Uh, the tactics had changed a bit. 
the factions. It was it was getting different. Yeah, you had more more artillery. Again, I'm not an expert. At all this is just my base, same with me. basic basic bitch me. level yeah, yeah, knowledge yeah, of it. But here's the thing: is the Napoleonic Wars, um, they would have a massive battle, and then everybody would go home. Literally, right, yeah. they go they go back home versus, until until they were right. told to come back. Versus the First World War, it's like, no, we're here until it's done. Yeah, that is, you know, you, you say that, and that see, see, and that, and that's that's where my see my history starts at World War One forward. I really don't have that much knowledge prior. So that's why I ask these questions. Well, well because, same yeah. to be honest, to be honest, it's like, because yeah, it's the farther I go yeah. back. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's so hard to go back. It's not, I mean, it's not hard, I should say, but it's like, it's, it's us as Americans. It's also hard to go back even further because we don't really have other than the civil war and the revolutionary war. It's hard for us to kind of engage on the Europe. No, well, for me, I, for I me personally, with that. I that. Yeah, yeah. For you personally. Yeah. Maybe perhaps. And like, I get that too, but it's like, it's, 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 um, it, it, being a historian of any level, amateur to completely expert, it's a matter of like, okay, how much time and effort do you have to specialize on one particular yeah, event, time period or whatever? And it's like, that's why I ask somebody if they're like, yeah, I'm a historian. I'm like, what time period and what subject do you specifically focus right. on? And some people that I've met, it's literally one, not even a conflict because like, history is not just right. war war is a huge part of it but like they go no i i study this and this and it's a very short period of history but it's ex it again everything's a fucking rabbit hole yeah it's like imagine imagine i mean, I mean look how much we've talked about just the subject alone just within the last 20 minutes so yeah <laughs> oh right right but it's like uh, imagine taking taking two years of just average life in say boston or or paris yeah. Or or Baghdad or, or 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 Mumbai, it's like imagine taking two years of history, all the shit that happens in there, and you have to try and decipher what went on in those two years or or however long you want to go for, it's it's impossible, right? And so I think guys like you and I and Michael are like jack of a lot of trades, master of none. Yeah, we get very specialized in certain things, but it's like at a point you overextend yourself. And so that's why it's like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going on a rant here, but I think it's very relevant for people to hear this. Why, you know, and then we're going to go back to analyzing the film because this is very relevant yes. to this because a, mo a lot of people do not know about or analyze world war one because it's quote unquote, so far ago and or so far back, you know, whatever so long ago. And I have a problem with that because it's not that long yeah. ago and it's not that unrelatable. And, you know, whatever. So, but yeah, it's that, that's kind of my, my observations, my opinion on people um, and historians alike doing certain subjects and like talking about right. them. So yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, but getting back to the film, um, I, uh, I have to say one of my favorite scenes in the movie is when, uh, and this is again, mirroring, um, mirroring uh what's it called uh paths of glory is when the glory, general yeah. is going down the trenches like inspecting everything and uh but he stops and you know everyone is just like fucking miserable you know and uh he stops and he's like show me your bayonet for this one soldier you know and he pulls out he's like yep there it is and he goes yep what's written on that bayonet and he goes I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, rust. Yeah, 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 rust. And uh, yeah. and then he shows it to the to the LT, and he's like, "You, we, you're an officer. What's written on?" He's like, uh, I, "I don't know what." And he's like, "Victory, goddamn it!" Like, yeah, he's like trying to make a point. You know, he's like trying to make this big, like, you know, uh, patriotic, you know, uh, speech, uh, yeah, speech yeah. inspiring moment, and everyone's just like whatever <laughs> it's rust you're gonna give us for the rust you're gonna yell at us because we have rust on our you know one guy had a spot of rust on his bayonet right yeah. that's what they're thinking and he's thinking no this is a this is a time to motivate the troops right yes and they're just like yeah. whatever <laughs> <laughs> yep yep so i like that part a lot and then right after that oh, yeah. he, tell, he makes a guy stand up and get shot by a sniper and then he comes up to him and what is it he gives him something gives him a coin for yeah. gives for, him a coin for a right. glass yep. of wine Right, yeah, he's like he's yeah, pretty much that's dead. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like so. It's like what? What do you? Yeah, what the fuck? Like, but that 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 proves that the stupidity of um, specifically European officers at that point, mm -hmm. right, coming in from the old world, 
and bringing their old world bullshit in with this modern warfare. They just didn't get that it. Were, yeah. that, that, it's a generational yeah, that gap. Outdated yep. either either in, in a cultural generational wise or a te- technological <laughs> wise as well. You know, with the with the new weaponry being able to reach out harder and faster and everything, and then right. also like the weird like yep. you know, honestly, I saw a lot of like cultural generational gap as well. You know, mm-hmm. yes, and in that same scene that you're talking about is. The general gets up and he's like, oh, I'm brave because he knows those guys. They're not going to hit him in the first couple shots. He no. knows that. And he do- they don't. And then he goes, you get up there. And then they're like, well, they're just going to adjust their fucking aim. And like, they're going to hit this guy. Mm-hmm. But what's cool is they fire two shots and this guy doesn't move. Because what they had said before then, right before this scene, is you're better off dead than being here. Mm, yeah. So he's like, you know, I'm wounded. Yeah. Yep, I, I I can get the fuck away if I die. I die, I don't give a fuck because it's so shitty. And like that, I think that actually comes through a lot in this film. Is like it's shitty. Like it's not the the trenches on the western front that you're thinking of. It's it's you know that mo- or not that you're thinking of, but like most people think of. It's this shitty little shallow trench in these mountains in the Sanzo area up in northeast Italy, or what is now Italy, and it's just fucking miserable like wh- what are we doing yeah every time we attack everybody dies every time we send out a patrol everybody dies again so much so that the enemy eventually stops yep. and says stop doing what you're doing you're just killing that scene was pretty fucking powerful i thought so i think too. Yeah. yeah because it's like yeah they're, they're sitting there going just stop and then the one guy tries to you know say all right this is it this is when we actually have the coup mm-hmm. and we have we have the fucking mutiny and then he just gets shot by his own guys. And it's like, yeah, everybody thinks it's, I mean, at the gates only, you know, the Soviets. No, they did that in World War One. They did that a lot because the French experienced the same shit around what well, was in the same year. Because by 1917, everybody was so fucking sick of the incompetence of their upper leadership um, that they were just like, fuck it. If we're going to die by their hands or our, our, our own hands, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. You know, like, what does it matter? Die either way. Yeah. Right. So it, it was, it was really, it was really kind of cool to see that. And it wasn't overdone. I don't think, you know, no. I mean, I think, yeah, I didn't think so either. Dude. I, I, uh, you know, I can, I'm pro- I usually like, I'm, I'm, I said, I'd say, I think I'm a pretty, uh, you know, uh, I can be a pretty tough crowd in some cases. And I really like roll my eyes a lot, you know, easily when it comes to overdoing stuff, but no, I never felt it here. This movie felt very subtle to me. Uh, in in many ways, right. Uh, so there was no. Uh, I mean, what are you laughing at, Nate? <laughs> there's, there's no pound nuts flat with a wooden mallet moment. No, there's yeah, none yeah, of that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. there's movie. no. Yeah, my nuts. Yeah, there's no. My nuts were intact. Yeah, there's no. There's no cliche till it hurts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. We got it. We got it. We finally. We finally got it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's. Uh, Nate. Nate, what do you comment about that whole scene where? Um... You know, I it it was it was I I I was not expecting that actually. I was not expecting, um, like, in the middle of the skirmish to then be a full-blown mutiny. You know, you expect the cliches. Again, I think it comes down to the same... I'll, I'll, I'll kind of comment the same way I said about Ungentlemanly Act. It's like that release of tension, but in a completely different way. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I... I thought a, a moment of that was the section 14 uh lookout hole at least that's what it was translates oh me. oh yeah you know the yeah. whole ass- yeah. almost assassinating the general with well oh let, let, let's get okay. into that let's get into that because i'm glad you brought that up so within the filmmaking process somebody somewhere said yeah like literally if you if you open that fucker up, this this is the best Austro-Hungarian sniper in the yeah. world, right? And they showed that with a cigarette, whatever. And all of a sudden, they open it up, and that sniper knows that guy is going to do more damage than I can yep. shooting him. You know, that it's kind of like the very symbolistic yep. and the very strategic. I I I when I when I got when I saw that, I immediately knew, and I was like, oh, because then afterwards, when he, the general left, and then he put the stick up and he shot the stick. That's the Austro-Hungarian sniper going, 
Yeah, you guys are yeah, fucked. Because <laughs> because of your yeah, own guys. Because you guys are you charging know? us and dying and dying and dying was, and dying. Like, that was fucking insane. You know, I, I love that part. Where, yeah, that yeah. was really good, but it was subtle enough to where it's like, it's not unrealistic because, again, do you want to shoot the guy that's doing the most damage to your enemy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, and and again, it's 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 that it's that outlook of you know think also also thinking like this, you know, the the best uh, you know sniper on the other side is constantly watching and viewing and observing oh, yeah. the other side, and it really yep. does comment on you know those guys can study and see what the best things are and you know mm-hmm. it, it, it you you again it comes down to the movie releasing the tension in a completely different way than you're expecting and i and i think that yeah. that is really prevalent in this film um i was also not expecting the guy's jaw to be shot off in that one scene too yeah that was that was impressive it was impress- it was, impress- it was a very impressive physical Effect, uh, sorry practical effect uh, physical as well but practical effect um in 1970s yeah. to actually look yes. good and impressive yeah. and convincing and i mean now the the bolt the, the 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 squib or the demo hits next to him with the handgun were off time that was the one thing that pulled me out of it but uh, but yeah. you know like you know yeah. again you were 80 yeah. percent there on selling me this you know like you know but like again it's like even that not w- quite being on time again that's nitpicky as shit it's the same things we had with ungentlemanly act it was the small little things we're like yeah well technically we can nail them with that but you know yeah but the rest of it's good you can overlook a good, those a good concept things, is you know? still a good concept yeah and, exactly. and it, they really i mean that, i mean that that i was like wow god damn like i had to like rewind it and watch it because i was kind of like i wasn't phasing in and out i was just multitasking and it, it pulled, yep. pulled me back into it you know because i'm i because i because i watched the guys going like Bleh. Right. Yeah, that's very Blah. that's that's the expected. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the old school <laughs> yeah. The thing, throw yeah. throw the hands up yeah. and go. Blah. But you know, but, but but then but then I saw that and I went, okay, let me rewind that. Let me watch this section real quick again. You know, yeah. Seventies seventies movies will occasionally surprise you like that. Um, you'll, yeah, you'll be watching a seventies movie and you're like, oh yeah, I can tell this is fake, and then all of a sudden something will pop up. I remember when I saw a movie I don't like, but uh, when I saw Catch Twenty Two, there's a moment in that movie that's like that where um someone gets they try to pick someone up and their shirt rips and their guts just come that's out. That's not yeah. that's not the George Clooney catch 22 thing. No, no, I'm talking about the original from 1971. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't yeah. know there was an original. That's good. Sorry, you said 1970s movie that should have connected in my brain. Sorry. I, yeah. I'm 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 tired today, sorry. It's all yeah. good, dude. Yeah, the yeah, the uh, catch 22 was originally uh the first film adaptation it was from 1971 with Alan Arkin and uh yeah, there's a it's a it's a goofy like parody you know like movie from the 70s about war but uh there's one moment where someone tries to pick someone up and their shirt rips and their guts just like fall out and it looks really real yeah it's, like, yeah, yeah. it's yeah it's like, jesus <laughs> christ i was not expecting yeah. that in this this movie <laughs> so it's kind of the same thing yeah eventually 70s movies will occasionally have stuff like that that jumps out at you it's like jesus christ that was insane what did you guys think about the acting overall well um you know it's kind of hard because um italian movies i don't know why there's a reason for this but they did adr in all their movies up until like 1980 something and i don't know Mm -hmm. nate do you know yeah i i do um it's um i had just watched james may's like in italy special and he explained it actually it's like it has to be a regional i think um uh um language of 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 italian i think it has to be a very specific one i think or or it has to be completely redubbed it's one of the two um but that is a thing they've 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 had to do and they still do and i don't know what the reason is other than just it being a formality um it does it does kind of take it away um but i mean we still like the movie so it's not too it's not too bad like i like I say, in terms of the acting, this there was this movie seems very subtle to me. Again, I think my favorite character was probably the fucking uh, the the general that you hate, you know, because he's so just disconnected and just delusional about everything. And uh, I liked his performance a lot, to where he's just so 
deadpan. Yeah. You know, about every he, he also doesn't overdo it, you know no. what I mean? No, like he that's the thing. He's not he, like like in Paz of Glory, the general is like very animated and stuff like that, which is fine. It works for that character, yes. but this is very much more subtle and and right. reserved, which I like. It's a lot more believable, I think. Yeah. Like uh in my opinion. But like it's because he's just so and then you've got you know, he's talking to and then oh so what did you think about the uh the guy that played the major, the guy with the uh, goatee? Um say, that he, ends up getting shot by yeah, his own guys. The guy with the glasses. Um, yep. Yeah, I like that scene a lot. I thought that was well earned. Um, there was a there was yeah, there, there was a lot more threatening to kill you kind of thing in this. Uh, the, I'm glad you brought the uh, or at least that s- to segue into that. It's like I wasn't expecting that much. We will freaking just kill you. Yeah, like it's, it's pretty up in your face. Yeah, <laughs> like like that guy who's tied up and he pulls the pull out and he still runs, but they cap him in the leg and pull him back, tie him back up, and shoot him. Like, and that whole scene's just going. Now, the music's definitely, not, okay, okay. Oh, the, the music is awful. is 1970s yeah. movie, especially. Yeah, yeah. Way yeah better exactly. with no score. The I, all, all, I, yeah, and and I I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. Uh, it goes off, and I just all want to say, <laughs> when the moon meets your eye like a big piece of pie. <laughs> That's all I could hear. That's a more. That's a more. That's that? all I could hear is like, these guys are getting tied up and shot. I'm like, I can go for a pizza at a family Italian restaurant right now. Well, I guess that's about what's going on. Little mandolin. Like, Jesus player. Christ. <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing makes me more hungry for pizza than fucking death. And fucking Dude, no, fi- yeah. firing squad makes me hungry for lasagna, man. What can I say? Well, like, that's, that's lovely. People getting shot and cut to Nate watching just like... <laughs> Oh, they actually use real eggplant oh, in this. Yeah, fucking hey, oh, man. These guys are oh, legit. Yeah. yeah. But like, go ahead yeah, go go and fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. Hold on. We're fire. Yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> fucking, like, yeah. like, you know, it's, it's American <laughs> Italian food, which is not even close to real Italian food. But no, it's, it's, right. oh, no, it's, no, no, no. It's, it, it was, it, and my, my point of making it, making it funny is that it, it, it's definitely the music's dated. In its in oh, yeah. its in its delivery oh, yeah. and and again it's the seventies. I mean, there's always weird mistimed music or just not just quite matching. It's just the time. Well, it also overpowers it a lot of time. Like it overpowers oh, yeah. what's actually and going again, on. And again, and again, know? that's that's. I think that's also the style of how the editing process was back then. You know, they didn't have that much control. Yeah. You know, over over minute you know sure. changes in the editing process, and so you know that's, that's something we definitely see in the '70s movies. It's either overblown music or so low you can barely hear it. You know, <laughs> right, so, right? Yeah, yeah there's there's really no, no in between, no. or or it's <laughs> complete music that doesn't even belong there. You know, or yeah, or you know, yeah. you go to Magnum PI, or it's like bang, da, bang, da, bang, well, da, bang, one bang. one one seventies film that actually like did I think do it right and okay by my estimation is Patton. oh yeah with the da, 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 da. yeah but it, it didn't overpower scenes it actually to me that actually supplemented scenes mm. like, but like that says that we can we can review yeah, yeah, later yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's one of my childhood favorites and it's still like seen, came out the same year as this. i haven't se- oh really yeah mm-hmm. oh yep. i haven't seen i god i yeah, haven't it, seen Patton in almost 20 years so yeah. oh it's it's still one of my all-time fucking favorites, and I don't know why, but it might just be nostalgia. But like, I I don't know, just the way it was shot and the I don't know. Anyway, but anyway, that's that's Patton. <laughs> but all but they come out in the same year, so it's like that says something. It's like lower budget. I get it because Patton had a you huge know what? I'm budget. Gonna check, I'm gonna check um, something and, while you say it. While you talk. Yeah. So um, lower budget, also a foreign film. Well, foreign from us sitting here in the U.S. All you guys from other countries, I apologize. When I say foreign, I mean not from the U.S. Because I'm a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, whatever. I'm an American. Anyway, um, I, I was just going to come up with a bunch of like words that they use. Like, you're a xenophobe or whatever. But it's like, no, I'm not. Anyway, um, no. So it's like, and it's not just this film. It's it's a bunch of other film like even kelly's heroes at times got a little overbearing right yeah yeah. with the music you know and that's i fucking love that film as well i know it's satire and it's funny but like even the music gets overbearing at times and in this one it did at times get overbearing and it's like well just tone the fucking music down let's hear what's going on you know well like i i think that uh you know like i said i'm I'm always like a guy of subtlety and that execution scene i think it would have been 
a million times more powerful if it was just no music uh, at all. Mike, a, I'm gonna, Mike, yes. a, I'm going to have to ask you which one because there's so many. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the firing squad scene, the scene where there the guy, are still the so guy, many. <laughs> the guy where the scene where the guy rips all, uh, himself away from the pole. Oh, they, okay, they okay, that, that okay, yes, 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 tie yes, him yeah. back yes. up to be executed. Yeah, th- that, yeah. that was when the 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 gang of pizza pie music was way too loud. Right, it's just like yeah. oh. Yeah. Right. It's just like this would be so much better yeah. if it was just no music at all. Or or very subtle or just a different Yeah, just maybe just like a little thing, like yeah. mm. which you know what which makes me wonder if maybe it was possibly redubbed music because Italy uh, I don't know just I don't know, just man. has laws against that. I know they have very weird harsh laws with that. So I mean like it yeah. could it could be for that. I'm trying to find I, I, you know, here's the thing with these older movies, the information may not be um, available and especially it being a European <clears> movie <throat> may definitely not be available, but I can't seem to find a budget uh, in here. No, um, um, I found out some interesting things. So one character we haven't mentioned is the young lieutenant in this who, uh, you know, his fate is sealed at the end of this movie. Right. Yeah. Um, I found out this was that guy's first movie, and he was actually American in real life. Uh, he wasn't uh, Italian. Um, and uh, he, after this movie, uh, he took all his royalties and blew them on, you know, like cocaine and hookers. And then, uh, yes. And then, uh, yes. He was so broke, he went and robbed a bank, uh, was arrested, <laughs> he was in prison. He was in. <laughs> I'm not making this up. I'm gonna pull up his was... IMFDB or IMDB. Yeah, IMFDB is in... different. <laughs> he was in prison, and then he was weightlifting and dropped a 150 pound barbell on his chest and killed himself on accident. What? Yeah, <laughs> that's a way to go out. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That was it sounds like he was living a, his best life and then he just fucked it over weightlifting. Yeah, I mean, like, he was, in bor- he was born in Boston, Massachusetts, and died in 1975 at age 27 in Norfolk, Massachusetts. Yeah, in prison <laughs> for robbing a bank. Jesus. <laughs> That's a hell of a biography. <laughs> Not, well, I mean, I, respect, man. Yeah, yeah. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> I was researching this movie and I was like, I, I just like, okay, let's look at the, 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 the main guy. And I looked, I was like, wait, wait, what? Like, it was just so shocking. Yeah, six to 15 year prison sentence. And he died in apparent weightlifting accident in a prison gym. When a hu- I'm, I'm, I'm sure that nobody else held that when a 150 down pound chest. barbell <laughs> fell on his neck, killing him. <laughs> yeah i'm sure that's exactly what happened. Yes, and like, it, I believe it, that it 100% just right on his neck. <laughs> uh, yeah but um no it's, it's interesting yeah like he you know he died in prison and whatever and that's you said that's a lieutenant the guy that the, yeah, um the, was the kind guy of, at the end yeah, yeah not the captain who died midway who actually oddly enough looks a lot like my dad really which is really weird oh yeah it looks a lot like my dad and i was like what the fuck like this is weird kind of watching him. but it's kind of cool to see his transformation too of like seeing the uh the lieutenant or the whatever before he was killed and kind of like talking to him. And he's kind of like this idealistic guy. And then he kind of starts realizing that, Oh, well, you know, there's a game being played and we're not in it to win. Right. Uh, We're not supposed to captain or the captain that died midway. I thought I knew him in a bunch of stuff like Westerns and things, which might be where I've seen him because there were a lot of Italian actors in Westerns in the seventies. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah yeah spaghetti westerns yeah spaghetti westerns yeah yeah you know yeah um that was like a huge fucking genre so i i wouldn't doubt it at all yeah you know uh sometimes they made them play native americans because they were just a tad yeah. shade darker yep. <laughs> yep. a little always, bit more melanin than the average yeah, yeah. average white yeah. boy like you and i <laughs> That's and always Michael. Fun to see, yeah you know um, yeah well, it's even but better yeah. in, when you watch like Audie Murphy westerns and you see all these uh, these white folk in uh, in tan makeup and everything. It's uh, that's always fun. Yeah, it's it's John Wayne, it's Audie Murphy, it's fucking Clint Eastwood. It's like everybody like just. <laughs> it's funny because like, oh, we can't get these actors. We can't possibly source native actual Native American people, but so we're just gonna make have our you, own. It's have like you ever well, seen the Pierce Brosnan uh, Native American movie in like nineteen ninety nine. 
Pierce Brosnan, Brosnan played a Native yeah, American? Yeah, well, I don't think he does. I think he plays like a white guy who was raised by Native Americans, if I remember oh, correctly. Okay. But it, but but I you'll see not. the t- if you ever saw the poster, you'd be like, what the fuck is this being here? For? You're talking about Dances with no. Wolves? No, 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 no. I'll find it for you. I'll send yeah, it to you. Kevin, by the way, Dances with Wolves, I don't care. Anybody can shit on it. It's a good fucking yes, it movie. Is. It's long, but it's good. Never seen it. So, you never see- Yeah, well- Someday when you get the time, uh, it's actually worth the watch. Okay. It's pretty. I, I think it's pretty good. You can disagree, but like that's why we it's watch these Grey films and Owl. talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Gray <laughs> Owl. I, I just typed it in on Google Images. Oh my god, that's comedy gold. <laughs> that poster. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I remember <laughs> seeing like that a... as a kid in like Blockbuster and going, "That's what? How? Why is James <laughs> Bond a Native American?" <laughs> <laughs> It's hilarious. I just sent it to the to the to the group chat. Um, the, the the poster. Oh my god, it's funny. Um, yeah, that's comedic gold right there. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it looks. Yeah, Pierce Brosnan, you're really pulling it off, bud. Nothing screams to me like Native American, like a Native Irish actor. Yeah, yeah. that's. Uh, is he Irish? Or is he is he not Irish? I can't remember. I thought he was British. He I British. I thought he was British, but who knows. I don't, I don't give a shit enough to know or talk about him right now. That's uh, true. Uh, Tangent. No, no, you, no. I just looked it up. Nate, you're right. Uh, Ireland. Yeah, yeah, he's Irish. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Irish. So he's still Northern European. Let's just throw that out there. Um, but yeah, anyway. anyway so Tangent over. Getting sorry, back yeah. to this. <laughs> yeah. It, guys, if you're listening to this, which you are because you've made it this far, um, we go off on tangents once in a while. It's part of the podcast. It's a free form podcast. It's not super organized and boring and analytical like Oh, I'm not going to call anybody out. Never mind. <laughs> um, but it's no, no, no. So um, look, you, you go on tangents. Uh, did you, you go got, on tangents and you go on hanging a road where you guys talked about you know gay sex for 30 minutes and I had to cut it down to five. Well, that five minutes. But it's relevant. Five it's relevant to the film. And and if Devin wants to talk about that, that's I mean that's kind of his thing. But uh, I mean the best part I mean, of the project, podcast. Projecting much? <laughs> Whoops. Um, but uh, no. So did you guys? Were you guys able to pick up any of the gear or no? Uh, well, okay. I was going to ask, like, so is that helmet, the Adrian helmet, is that just the same as the French? Uh, yes and no. Okay. Do you want to get into the yeah, gear yeah, really let's quick? Yeah, yeah, Because I have, I have, I have I a, few, I a few questions I, I, for that, yeah. Sure. And I, I, have, I have very limited yet more than the usual person knowledge on Italian and Austrian Italian, 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 and I'll, and I'll, we'll get back on subject in, in 30 seconds. But the, the thing with Italian stuff, even in World War II, it is quite extravagant and quite not practical with warfare. Um, not entirely true. I mean, I'm, I'm, but also I'm, not entirely I mean, false. I mean, I'm not entirely I mean, false. I'm thinking so, of very we, specific we, things off the top of my head. We'll, so. we'll, yeah, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll, let's, let's just start with the yeah, helmet yeah. right now. So I'm going to show you, I know, I know you guys are listening, cannot see this, but I'm going to show you, this is an actual 1916 pattern, Italian, Adrian, whatever the fuck helmet, mm-hmm. right? It's got this liner in there with the little uh, spacers, the aluminum spacers, or that's on this side. Um, all that stuff. Yes, they were patterned off of the French Adrian helmet. They, for the sake of this conversation, there's two things that differentiate this from a French Adrian helmet, which they also use, which we'll talk about in a second. Right here that I'm showing you, there's not a bead going around the center of the um, the the shell of the helmet meeting with the visor, right? It's mm-hmm. smooth. It's just, a, it's just a stamped piece of metal. Also, the comb right here you can see does not have any rivets in it, right? It's just, it's brazed and or welded on. I don't know exactly. Some brazed, some welded, who knows? So... This is actually a two-piece helmet. The French one was a three-piece helmet, and so their their brim was. I mean, I could show you, but it's getting really into detail. But like, um, I can show you my original. But basically, yeah, it's a simplified version of the Adrian helmet. But in late 1915, the French actually gave them. They fulfilled a request for. I don't know. It, it was a decent number of French Adrian helmets, right? So. They sent them these helmets that were not, they didn't have the badge on the front, like the mm-hmm. whatever, but they were actual French helmets. They sent to them and the Italians painted them green. And some of them got painted green in the factories because they said our uniforms aren't blue, horizon blue, they're green. So whatever. And that's why this one's painted green. 
so yes, you 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 would have seen, especially in 1917, you would have seen both models. You would have seen the 1915 Adrian helmet, the French one, and you'd have also seen the 1916, which is what I just showed you, which is also a little bit different. Same design, same concept. Okay. In this film, I think there was a shitload of like plastic replicas that had rivets in the comb on the top, like I showed you, like the piece. Uh, because even the rivets don't line up with a lot of the 15 Adrian helmets. Because I can get into super detail about that. But basically, there were a lot of what I think are original 16 shells and 15 French shells being used in the film. But then what they couldn't get with that, they made plastic molds and then just used those with extra rivets and shit in the side that, or maybe their post-war adaptation. I don't know. But like it, the rivets in the comb especially were just inconsistent about it's, it's 50 50 in the film, like accurate helmets that they would have worn and kind of my question, you know, helmets that they would have worn, but yeah, they, the, but yeah, the, the, the Italians from 16 on generally wore in a combat zone, uh, these Adrian style helmets. Okay. So yes, yes. that's what, I, that's what yep. I, I immediately saw that. I'm like, those are French helmets, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, some of them were, yep. Yeah. But like that's actually that's actually very historically accurate. Okay. So and they had like a uh, something stenciled on the front, like I guess. Yeah. So or... the so that that's a part that like I know the very macro of. So I won't. It's not gonna be that long of a rant. Yes, some people, some units stenciled their unit marking on the front, whether they're infantry, uh, light infantry fucking mountain troops engineers that kind of shit just like the french did but they actually had metal badges that were separate and would go into that right. um <clears throat> the italians also had a separate metal badge for certain branches at first the supplies kind of got fucked up so not all of the italian helmets you're going to see from the first world war will have badges on them so they would paint or stencil them on or they would just have nothing on there mm -hmm. so and that that's my knowledge on that okay, okay. and so if anybody's listening and i'm wrong <laughs> let us know but like that's what i've learned so far and right. yeah and um from what i could tell again i'm a, i'm macro when it comes to this uh yep they're what 1891 carcanos all of them is that what they're yeah doing? the carcano they're rifles burning uh, them they, yeah people are burning them now because no one wants them <laughs> <laughs> well and they're yeah. dumb because they're actually a really good yeah. rifle um and yeah so what was weird is yeah they were using for the most part the 1891 carcano rifle and they had the correct that, sights on the them. Is it um, the correct way to say it? It's it's one way to okay. say it. Uh, Carcano, you're going to piss off somebody from northern Italy. Carcano, you're going to piss off somebody from very southern okay. Italy. Carcano is or Carcano, you know, is like kind of central. From what I understand, people correct me on YouTube all the time. Um, you can pronounce it Carcano. I I think Carcano sounds more. It just sounds like part fun. of a chocolate plant. So I want to make sure I'm I'm digesting that okay. <laughs> oh right, it's funny because they were yeah. Well, we'll get into that. But like, <clears throat> the, uh, no. So these rifles were made in several different parts of Italy, but no, they're actually not bad rifles. Now I did like. Or no, no, no. We'll go, we'll go on really quick before that. Um, so they were using the 1891 yeah. <clears throat> infantry rifle. They didn't have, and this was filmed in 1970. They could have used a lot of 9141s, which is sitting behind me, which has the. It's a shorter right by about a half inch. It's a shorter rifle with shorter or like smaller sights, same action and everything like that. And they could have used those. They chose to actually get 1891 rifles, which I appreciated. Now, some of those rifles had bent bolts in them. Now, that could be for a couple different reasons. One, their bolt got fucked up somehow or got rusted shut. It was a re-arsenal thing and they threw in a, a carbine bolt, right? It'll still work for a lot of things in, in a rifle. Um, all that stuff. And then they also used, oh, oh, really with, with the rifles themselves, literally nobody had a fucking cleaning rod slash clearing rod on their rifle, which is that I don't think is accurate. Okay. Um, that, that is one thing I had a problem with. I'm like literally no, like if there's one or two guys that lost it, who gives a fuck? That's, that's pretty accurate. Right. But literally no soldier had a clearing rod or cleaning rod underneath the muzzle of their 1891 rifle that's 
not going to be accurate in the first world war. And then there was one guy in one scene, which I, I kind of think that they were just going for like, this guy's been through combat. Cause he's on the retreat where he had a broken bayonet attached to his rifle. That's cool. I don't have a problem with that. That's pretty cool. Uh, but he also didn't have a clearing rod on his fucking rifle. So, um, but anyway, yes, those rifles were correct. That's what they've been using. They also, the, um, I'm going to butcher this, the, the kick, uh, fucking the Italian, it's kind of like a federal police, but it's, it's different than the U S works. They have, it's Carabinieri or k- k- fucking. <laughs> You're doing better than it's me. A word You're doing that better I've, than me. Don't worry. I've never, well, they still exist. That's the thing is like, they still exist. They use military firearms, but they're technically police, mm-hmm. but they are technically military police at the same, like they can do both things. It's a weird thing that they have. And they've had this for a long time. The uh, I'm sorry if you're from Italy listening to this and I'm butchering this. You try to pronounce English words correctly and you do it perfectly. I'll give you a cookie. But so, but uh, no, basically the Italian police, which is the guys in the film wearing the funny hats, right? With the flaming bomb on the front. Oh, you're talking about the ones that look uh, like Napoleonic hats? That was yes. one of my questions. I don't know what that was. Yeah. Yeah. So those guys, from what I understand, are they kind of, let me look this up really quick. Yeah, I was like, what are those three three cornered pirate hats? That was a little Okay. Um, so that doesn't help. Thank you, Wikipedia. Carabinieri. Carabinieri. Like it's it's C A R A B I N I E R I. Anyway, so we've got that. So uh, those guys are carrying actually uh 1891 T S or Trupp Special Trupp Speciale rifles, right? Or carbines rather which I'm looking at on my wall right now. And so that's going to be very accurate because that's where a lot of these rifles on my wall came from that the, these guys use these for fucking 80 years. They're carrying carbines because they're not a, they don't need the distance. They don't need the weight because they're serving a different purpose than line infantry or combat right. arms. They're enforcing laws, but they still have a, a carbine, which fires a rifle cartridge and you know, whatever. And so they were carrying those. Now, there was one scene. I don't know if you're going to be able to find it on IMFDB when we get to it. There is no IMFDB there was one page scene. for this, by the way. There's it not. Is. We should we should fucking make yeah. that. We've got two films now where we have to make the, the page. Yeah. I, I, I think, um, I think but we anyway, need to do it for our homework and then put our title all over it. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because um, there's one scene. I just scene spent the last like the 10 one... minutes trying to find it. I couldn't find it, so. Yeah, no, that's fine. I appreciate that. Um, but there's one scene where the, there's one, um, we'll just call them police for the sake of me not fucking butchering that word anymore. Yeah. Again, sorry if you're from Italy. Uh, but there's one police soldier carrying an M9138 rifle, which is what JFK was assassinated with, as the story right. goes. Blah blah blah. But like it, but that that was that's not gonna be around the first one. No, that's a, that's, that's, a, that's that's gonna come that's, out that's in the thirties. Era rifle. Yeah. Yes. And so he's carrying that. It's a short rifle, but like whatever it's it's it literally in one scene walking away but because i love the carcano or carcano rifle so much i recognize the different variants right. and i'm like oh okay yeah cool but overall sorry to be on this rant but like overall the rifles the um the pistols i'm not actually sure of that was my next question was what was the major shooting because i was hoping the imfdb would answer that but we don't have one so if I looked at it and did some more research, I could. Because it looked that, like a sem, it looked like a out. semi-automatic slide pistol. Yes, you know, and they had a bunch of shit. It looked like a, it looked like a ruby esque. Yeah, that's firearm. what I was thinking. And yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure it wasn't, but like, I don't know, so I'm not gonna yeah. say what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it didn't I, look I'm like not, a revolver. I'm not just gonna spew least, shit. So yeah. No, no, it was a semi-automatic. Yeah. It was a self-loading pistol yeah. for sure. But uh, anyway, um, um real. And I, I did like the way, really quick before I move on, I did like the way the guys were kind of manhandling the, the uh, bolt of the rifle Yeah, during this thing. Because uh, the rifle itself, I don't know if you guys have fired them, they're, they're really good, accurate, precise rifles. The bolt design is fairly, you have to fucking, you really it's have clunky. to want it. You have to work for it. Uh, yeah. I fired one of your... Uh... Carcano, right? Oh, the carbine. Yeah, the carbine. Yeah. And that was yeah. one. I mean, yeah, you really had to work. You just it. got. You just got to. You just got to want it, right? right? Yeah. And as you, I remember as you told me one time, you said these rifles are not going to break. You, you know, don't worry about uh, yes, just jamming that thing back. So. Just fucking manhandle it, and it's yeah. like, 
Yeah, when you do, and so yeah, that is a drawback in my opinion. But anyway, that was portrayed in the film, which was kind of a cool little subtle yeah. touch. Mm -hmm. Anyway, sorry for the super long rant on the rifle and the weapons itself, but because there's no IMFDV page, I guess yeah, that's yeah. Over. Well, uh, the so there are not a lot of clear images of machine guns in this. But there, oh. there wasn't there. Well, there was uh, there was uh, two scenes that actually I could uh -huh. I could pull it up real quick. I don't know what the Italians were using. It might have been a Breta, um, which was the cavalry charge scene in the beginning. The the captain's on a machine gun, uh, and then the other one is the Germans were using 08s, 08 fifteens or whatever. Well, those weren't Germans until the end. Um... Oh well, whatever whatever the I other side just, was using, they were using Maxims. I know that. Well, right, but like here's the thing: is they had. Um, let me see really quick. Okay. Uh, oh, by the way, okay. it jump started my brain. Well, f uh, well, s s second or first question though might be: Did the Italians have the problem yeah. they did in the Second World War with two different types of caliber rounds? No. Okay. Nope. So they just made that mistake. They once. use a six five. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. yeah, they figured out during a war too. It was like right, shit, bad right. timing. Um, uh, no, the six five of fifty two was like universal in the in the first okay. world war for their rifles okay. um, and machine guns, as far as I know. Because yeah, they use the uh, apparently the Fiat Revelle Modelo nineteen fourteen, which looked. They were trying to mock those things up in this movie. And they were also like doing a hybrid of a Schwarzlose, like the Austro Hungarian yeah. um, machine gun with the, the grips like yeah. this. And the Model 1914 that I'm looking at has just butterfly handle, mm -hmm. two grips. Um, so the machine guns probably, and it also has a huge flash hider. That probably was not accurate. They probably just mocked up a bunch of shit. For well, most so. 70s There's movies, the machine guns are normally mocked. Like the fifty. Right. Well, there's one shot where uh, it's the scene actually where the 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 enemy stands up and says, "Stop, you know, stop uh, running yeah. into our machine guns." And the uh, the general's way back there, and he has his machine gun open up on them to motivate them, as it were. And yeah. I'm pretty sure that was also an 08 that they were using for the Italian machine gun. That's what it looked it was like. It was an 08 or a 1917 or a Vickers or something like that that they mocked up. Did they have Bretas? It, it was Did not they have Bretas out there. Is that a World War II concept? I think, I think it's a World War II. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think that was in the 20s that Breda started coming up with that. I could be wrong because I'm not I'm not an expert yeah, on time machine guns my, at yeah, all. Yeah. So, but uh, as far as I know, they came out in the late 20s when people were trying to figure out like light machine guns and for the most part, shit. I think and, what it was the Maxims and the Vickers and the Hotchkiss were the ones. There wasn't any Hotchkiss in these. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, just in general of World War One. Oh, in World War One, yeah. yeah. So yeah, the French, the French mainly utilized the Hotchkiss 1914, um, and yeah, the the British used the Vickers 19 whatever the fuck. Oh, in 1917, okay. water cooled for us for Americans. Well, actually, the Americans use a lot of Hotchkiss 14s in the 1970 came through. Right, right. I, I mean, like, I mean, like, yes, as, a, yes, as, as a developmental concept of machine yes. guns of World I'll, I'll stop bringing yeah, yeah. detail. But yes. And then uh, the uh, the Russians used the Maxim 1910. Yeah. The Germans used the Maxim 08 and then 0815 subsequently. Yeah. Um, and then the Austro-Hungarians used the Schwarzlose, which is basically a Maxim, but it's, I don't know the difference, like, it looks a lot different, and the the handle is like this. Hmm. You hold it instead of like so this. So it's kind of like biker bars. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's riding it's, a Harley, but it was effective. <laughs> and I think I think the Schwarzlos had a higher rate of fire slightly than the 08. Okay. Don't don't no, quote no, no, me on yeah, that, but like I think I think it did, and it was very effective. And then um, also a, another machine gun that I would love to see used by like more central powers is the Madsen or the Masson. Guilty. Um, I light love machine gun. Madsen. Oh my god, dude, th those things were very mobile, and the 0815. Oh, I love Madsen's because the uh, oh, little history. So little bit of history on this. What or I think they're portraying in this film is the Battle of Caporetto. Yeah, right. Which was October 24th through December 19th of 1917. This was a. This was also called the 12th Battle of Asanzo. Right. <laughs> So they, dude, the Italian Austro-Hungarian front is very underlooked, under researched, because it's 
it was small, but it wasn't. It was so fucking incredibly brutal and just vicious. And you had the winters to deal with, which is what I liked that they, they put did in the show film. winter time had, in this time. Yeah. Yes. And you had nasty winters, and there were and people like, and, literally and on, making. On, it looked like a real snow, to be honest. It, it, again, yeah. thank you. Yes. The, the snow looked real. Like when it was on the uh, the general, when he came in, when they, he found out they were talking shit about him inside, and they were doing their toast because they thought he was dead. He had snow on his on his on his hat. It's not a kepi, it's a hat. And on his uniform. And I'm like, that's real snow. Like that's legitimately yeah. snow. The way it bunched up and the way the crystals were formed, which is actually a pretty cool thing. I appreciate that because most films just make fake yeah. snow. Yeah. If they made fake snow, it looked good. So you, but um not yeah. not to push us off a different subject, but dude, that cavalry charge. Cavalry. It's cavalry. It's Calvary's the hill that Jesus Christ was supposedly <laughs> crucified on. It's Calvary. See, 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 I don't know if this is Maryland talk or if this is no, no, this is not Maryland talk. This is U.S. talk. Where uh, Calvary? There, uh. there is a difference between Calvary and cavalry. Yes, Ca- I, I know yes. Calvary. It's 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 one of those little stupid <laughs> pet peeves. My... Hey, Nate, Nate, can you count to one, three? Two, three. I can count, can to, count three. to three. Oh, you haven't seen? No, that. I Never haven't. Mind. What is that? Little Meat Canyon reference. Oh. Um, anyway, um, okay. So just say it. Cavalry. Cavalry. That's okay. how you say it. Yes. We talking it, about mounted troops. It is also troops. Maryland like to skip a letter in a word. No, 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 no. It's not just skipping a letter. It's reversing <laughs> letters, and that's not just Maryland. That's the United States at large. Okay. It's not. It's not a you thing. Don't feel okay. special. Don't feel I thought, special. I thought in your I was going to be fuck like up. you know. That was gonna be a you know proud thing to be illiterate as fuck. No, old bay can't save you from this <laughs> fuck up. So, but anyway, it's cavalry. Anyway, it's I, I I'm a, I'm an asshole. I'm a very pedantic when it comes to certain that's shit, fine. and that's one it's of the why, words. It's why, but it's like, why it's why we anyway, keep talking. Yeah, the ca- it's fine. The, the cavalry charge, honestly, I would say that that's not at all realistic for 1917, especially late. No, but it's quite impressive on film. On film, that's why they right. did it. I think. I mean, why would I mean, right? why would you charge against an open field like that with a yeah. machine gun? They, dude, the British learned yeah. that in 1914. Yeah. That's a very early war they, tactic, correct? Well, it was a pre-war tactic, and it was very early on figured out at the Battle of Mons, right? Right, M O N S. In 1914, the British decided to charge their cavalry. <laughs> across this wheat field and they thought it was going to cover them and they just got cut down by machine guns and one of the officers got captured or you know a lot of guys got captured but like when the german officer was interviewing the british officer he goes what were you thinking he goes i was doing my job he goes we're out of that we're out of that the exact words i don't know but like he's like basically like we're out of that phase we have machine guns yeah. mm-hmm. cavalry is outdated at this point yeah, yeah. like what are you thinking and he was like, okay, isn't, yeah, I guess you're right. Isn't that like the whole like thing about, uh, was it Black Horse? Isn't that the movie? With Tom, with War Horse. War Horse. Horse. With, with, yeah. with, with Tom yeah. Wilson yeah, with the, and, the tree yeah. line, and Benedict yeah. Cumberbatch and all that other stuff. Yeah. Benedict Cum- yep. Cabbage Patch. Yeah, yeah, Cabbage Patch. Well, yeah, Cavalry was outdated at that point. And like, well, here's the thing on the Western Front. I should have very yes. specified that because I, I know there's a bunch of people reading right now because I admit I should have said on the Western Front and the Asanza Front, all that shit. Cavalry is it, when you've got machine guns in very choke pointed uh, terrain where it's very easy to control your enemy and where they're coming to and you get good defensive positions on the Eastern Front, however. In 1914-15, cavalry actually was a mainstay until about early 1916. Yeah. From what I've researched, I could be wrong because because it was so open and it's like, yeah, well, if we spread out, machine guns can only take out so many of us. We've got the infantry coming up behind us. We can actually still do this. And yeah, you would see cavalry on both sides with lances still, okay. not with guns. Yeah. So, yeah, I got um, so I pulled up the scene that has the the Italian machine gun in it. And I just I got to show you guys what I'm looking at here, because I don't know what the hell this is, honestly. Um, I yeah, just took a screenshot of it. Yeah, thanks yeah. for grabbing that. Cause I was thinking you can also it. share your screen if you want. Oh, yeah. Why, why not just do that? Um, yep, because then we can just talk about it to people that are listening. But like, 
Yep. You know, it's funny while well, you pull that up, Mike. Mm-hmm. A. My um my great uncle was in the Marines uh before World War Two, and he was in a uh, now I'm self conscious Calvary. Calvary <laughs> alert. Cavalry. I can't. Oh. Just put the oh, V. Just put oh, the V before. Oh, fuck, just focus on that. Whenever, whenever you brigade. say that word, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, cavalry, yeah. a fucking horse brigade. Oh, so this um, is uh, what is that? He, 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 what the? He fuck? was in that. Go well, ahead, he Nate. was in that, and I always thought that was very interesting because even though he was stateside through the whole war, it was really interesting that that was even a thing that they would even try to train guys in and still be relevant. But this machine gun is too Frankenstein for me to continue my story. What the fuck is that? That looks like yeah, a, I, I that looks, have no that's a thirty. Fu- that's a nineteen seventeen or a, th- a nineteen nineteen. No, it's back not. End. No, look at the back end. It's got the the the. the uh, it's the, Maj Podge. Uh, oh, the, the sight. Yeah, yes. it's got a thirties body with. But the but well, like, look at this. There's like a huge is that fucking is space that a right Madsen here. top cover? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that is. It looks like a 1917 <laughs> got... with a weird top. Yeah. Okay. So it's 1917, and also the the the, the barrel and the shroud very too short yes yeah. it's like a short um it's like a shorty 1970 what the fuck are we i think it's made this is made to look like a Re- reveille uh Mod- modello uh, 1914 no, no no it's made to look like a schwartz okay um look google schwartz uh well yeah because S- look at the handles yeah look at look at uh the austro-hungarian schwartz and that's also i'm pretty sure a vickers fucking uh or no it's a 1917 tripod that's a 1917 yeah. tripod yeah, it is a 1917 tri- with a yep. yep with a 1917 body with a barrel and a barrel and a shroud that's cut short or or or, it's also or, or it could also yeah. be uh, uh a depth perception thing mike as well okay i, I guess uh, yeah i mean i guess it is trying it's to, not trying to look like the uh schwartz lewis because i just looked it up and uh yeah you, you see what i'm saying it's definitely not that but yeah it's uh it's definitely i can see that it's trying to, to it's trying to because the, the italians would have captured the austro-hungarian weaponry yeah absolutely and um it's funny because um the uh, Austro-Hungarians and Italians would talk to each other, and one anecdotal um, kind of thing was where people say the Carcano shit. It's like, no, the Austro-Hungarians were like, they would grab the Carcano because the recoil was a lot less, and the bullet would fly a lot flatter because it's 6.5 instead of 8 millimeter. Because the, uh, the, the Steyr M95 rifle that the Austro-Hungarians were using was an 8 by 50 rimmed cartridge, and it was a uh, round nose. It wasn't a Spitzer bullet. It was a round nose bullet, and it was loaded pretty weakly, to be honest with you. And they, they, uh, the Austro-Hungarians would capture the 1891 rifle and use it because it would shoot farther and flatter and be very more accurate than their battle rifles. And so, yeah, it's insane, but um, that's also very anecdotal. It's not, I can't quote the source, but. I did read it somewhere from a guy that was in the Austro-Hungarian army. It was a, me- a kind of a memoir of his, but um, okay. anyway, that, that, yeah, that, that it's funny. There's one thing with the, that's with movies, especially older movies, with that it will like Frankenstein fucking guns to make them look like different. Oh, things. and this is egregious. I mean, yeah. I love I, I love this and I hate it at the same time. It's so interesting, yeah. Because like again, like Nate said, what the fuck is the fucking feed tray cover doing? What are we? What, what's going it's on like, there? It's like. Uh, I don't. It, it looks like, dude. So that top bit isn't even acting like a feed tray. Yeah. No. Or, or, such or, a sorry. Sorry. It's, not not yeah. a feed tray. It's not even acting like a top cover. It is literally yeah. above the top cover. Well, when you watch the actual right. footage of that, that quote top cover is going like is like is like flat. Oh, it's bouncing. Yeah, it's so bouncing it must around. be like yeah. metal sheet metal, just kind of pop plop plopped on top of it to make it look like a silhouette of something they want to make so mike can you can you uh share really quick and uh put on your uh, uh on this thing a schwartz losa yeah just so nate yeah, can see I don't it know, i don't know so I, I couldn't even I, I couldn't cover? even fucking spell it nonetheless look it up right now and yeah i have a, I have a talent. we can barely say cavalry yeah. so i wouldn't expect you to schwartz yeah. Losa. Yeah, oh that is exactly what they were trying to go for but that is not at all what that is well, Zoom out a bit, dude. That to... tripod yeah. is kind of close to it. it there, but it's not. No, it's it's no, no, not. No, no, no. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying I can say that's what they were going for. So okay. Oh, on the top, that's what they were yeah. going for. 
They were getting a little knob on the left side, but it's tiny so in, the, it in, the, in the actual like, film. It's huge. So it looks like they were trying to make that <laughs> sheet metal top cover with that sight. But if you look at the picture, yeah. it's a huge knob with a cutout. It looks or right. or it's a parts kit that they just that they cut apart to fit it over the, the 1917 that was blank adapted to make it look like that. Well, let's see the shroud one more time, Michael, like the barrel shroud okay. on the short. You can also. see through it on this one. It's a solid yeah, piece, but the other one you can see all the way through it. <laughs> The giant. The, see the thing with the Schwarzlows are like a big thing was the the huge flash header you yeah, see on the front, which, which yeah. that one it's obviously like doesn't phone. have. Yeah, it was pretty consistent. And the little, I really the like that pad. handle though. That's cool. Yeah, dude. Yeah, a lot. Well, that's why they were captured a lot yeah. and like used a lot. They were using World War II. The shit out of that. Yeah. It yeah, cool. it's a, and it was chambered at eight by fifty rimmed. Um. So yeah, and then you got the little holes in the front. Oh, the wow. vent holes in the front. It's got some vent holes in the water jacket. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. But, that's fucking the Schwarzlos. It was actually it's arguably if you talk to World War One nerds like myself, and even more intense nerds, that was actually one of the best heavy machine guns of the first. I World bet War. you that's a real part on top of that fake one that they just cut through it just to make it look like it. Because in the seventies, who cares? They were probably everywhere. Versus now, we covet them. Oh uh, no, I don't. I don't think. Well, well no, because look, well, look how it's made. I mean, it's 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 cut all the way through. You can see the sun through. You can see the sky yeah. through it. So obviously they cut it over to fit over the Vickers. But that is that's probably an original part. Because look, it's got the same riveting placement and the same part right there on the corner of that. Go and back to the look, and really look at quick. the knob on the top sight. It's on the other side of that picture. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So, so see that no- well, when Mike's. Oh, he could. He could. They, they could have just. Yeah, you're probably right. It was a parts yeah, kit. Yeah, and they just and they just and they probably butchered just, that top cover to fit over it. Oh, you. Oh, there's yeah. the knob. You're right. I didn't yeah. see that. They they just threw that forward of the rear sight on the 1917 yeah. receiver. Because <laughs> look, it's still got the hinge on the top. Yeah, for yeah. sure, absolutely. Oh my god, that's what they fucking did to make it a Schwarzlosa. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyway, it's uh, guys that are not seeing this, which would explain, which you can, explain why the barrel doesn't have the shroud because or the, the the flash hider on the front of it because it's probably not tapped and and che- and threaded, so you can't check it out though. It, it. Check it out. It, it does have those vent holes though. Uh oh my god! <laughs> this is getting even because that's not a fucking short as a receiver. Like go so that's to a 19, that's a, a, that's definitely a nineteen seventeen or or a Vickers. Yeah. But it, that, can can you Mike? Can you get a picture of uh, Schwarzenegger from the left side of the receiver, yeah, let me like that it. we're looking at right now? Yeah. Just yeah, see if you can look for that. Because for those of you that are listening and not watching, we're just trying to pick apart like how they actually made these machine guns. Here's the thing: is they knew what was used at that point, which is hey, I'll give them props. Yeah. You know, like that's because they tried to make a Schwarzenegger. They couldn't get one, so they tried to make one and mock one up and use what they had. And it's just insane that. Oh yeah, it's definitely yeah. definitely 1917. Because yeah, because yeah, look, because yeah, look, it comes down in that it comes down in that hill formation oh, yeah. past the site, which is that one. It just ends on the one that we're looking at. It just ends. This one, it, just, it slopes it slopes down on after yeah, the site. Yeah, the, the, the ejection port is way lower. It's yeah, not, it's and not, that's why there's yeah, a yeah. 1919 site or 1917 1919 site behind it. Yeah, exactly. They threw they took that part of an actual Schwarzlose. <laughs> And threw it onto a fucking <laughs> 19... And they made it work. It, it fired blanks. Yeah. yeah. You can see it fired blanks. And you know what? If you think about it, they weren't... In 1970, you're not expecting a bunch of nerds, you know... No. Uh, how no. many years now is this? 52 years later? Yeah. Freeze framing it? Oh, yeah. No yeah. way. No way. It's like, that's... Okay, so I actually respect that more now. Like, that's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> Like that's Garen goddamn go ahead, No one else has no one else has ever done that. But they've done similar things with other guns. But uh that's kind of crazy. I still don't know about the shroud. That's not crazy though that they did put those fucking air holes on the on there. But they sh- it, well it might just be a, an angle. It could just be a, a point of view. But also, yeah, that tripod's a nineteen seventeen. Yeah, because it doesn't because it doesn't, really it doesn't have it. that back secure point. No, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. It's it's it, it's taller. Yeah. It's like the those, Jesus Christ, that's those, funny. But those fuckers are heavy too. <laughs> God, that's fucking. Oh crazy. yeah, I had to run one through a trench oh, yeah. one time, and that was it. Almost killed me. Just the, the tripod they're, alone. 
It makes it makes yeah. It, tripods it makes, are like what 80, 90 yeah, pounds. Yeah, it makes the Lafets the, yeah. the the MG thirty fours and the forty two Lafets. Even though the, those are concepts or World War One concepts, they make yeah. those nineteen seventeen tripods oh. look so simple or so light and simple. I mean, well, shit, that's actually really cool. I'm like, I'm not even shitting on this at this point. Like, that's no, actually, I'm impressed by it. I'm not angry cool about it. Well, and, yeah, yeah. And dude, I, I bet you this picture it was bouncing because like you see. You see, it was supposed to be flush. Like you can see, like where the where the where you can see the sun through the uh, like just above the rounds. Yeah, it's probably bouncing at that point because it was just loose. But like, well, hey, they tried. Let's let's watch it here. Here, let's. Uh, let's oh, you go, oh, you fucking a. Yeah, let's see. What? Those horse falls though are really cool though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah look, it's insane. bouncing. It is <laughs> yeah. bouncing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's yep. what I mean. Yeah, it's just fucking loose on there. <laughs> yeah. So it's just a part. But how the fuck? Whoever whoever was the armorer that got that gun working with blanks, mm-hmm. if you're still alive and you possibly hear this and you're in Italy and you speak English, which is a lot of criteria, good fucking job, man. Honestly, I'm not even mad at you. Like that's that's really yeah. impressive. Yeah, that's, that's cool. really impressive to try and make it look like a Schwarzlosa. Like that's really cool. Mm-hmm. But I love shit anyway. Like um, what was uh, we're talking about guns and shit now and like equipment. Which I'm actually loving because, like, <laughs> I actually know a decent amount of World War One shit, which is yeah. fucking great. I'm finally in my wheelhouse. You guys are all World War Two, and like, I know a bit, but like, you guys, when you start talking, I'm just sitting there going, "Jesus <laughs> Christ," you know, like. But no, it's 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 fucking fun. Um, but you guys have any other questions like Did, that? I could. What, was the was the was the um the gear on them okay? Like belts and or, um, or am, as like, far as you know. as far as their belts and car, uh, ammo pouches, those did not really change from World War One to World War Two. Yeah, the blue the blue leather, the two pouches on each side, uh, and then just this, it's it's literally just a, like a belt right, yeah. that they wore. It wasn't like anything fancy with a buckle. It was just like a a belt with a fucking uh, uh, a little pin buckle, I guess. Yeah, you call yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Where it just yeah, whatever. And um, yeah, that was fine. Their canteens, their bread bag. I don't know about the bread bags and shit because I don't go that far into it. The uniform color was correct because uh, Italians wore green. It got a little bit more turquoisey green in World War II, but it was still kind of the same yeah. color. So they're one of the only militaries that actually wore green wool uniforms. You, th- this might be a tangent. Do you know anything about the... So this is how much it stuck with me. About, oh God, it must have been almost 15 years ago now. I was at a World War II event, and we had Italian reenactors doing a trench uh, event with us. There was only, like, five of them. They all had the vulture wing, like, the vulture wing, like, bird wing thing. Oh, they were doing the, the Bersi, Bersi, Bersi Aguilari, the mountain troops. Yeah, basically. and I was like, what the fuck is this? No, they, they literally still wear those in Afghanistan. Why? Oh, my God. Or when, when we were in Afghanistan. Yeah. Well, it it okay. So that the feathers, yeah, yes, it's, like, it's, it's like a, a big a feather vulture plume. wing. Yeah, yeah. So or that whatever the fuck was it is. something from way back when it would actually break up the outline of your head, and it was kind of the symbol of an elite unit. Right? <laughs> Pop over a rock and go caca. <laughs> no, but it actually, it actually, like it, when you're in the woods. And no, shit, I know, I mountains, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, no, but like I, yeah, I get yeah. it too. Like it looks fucking weird. Um, and, and I, I, I didn't pronounce that right. Bersig, Bersiglieri. Dude, I can't even say cavalry. Like I did. I did it wrong again. Yeah, cavalry, just V, just V before V before yeah. whatever. Um, but no, it's it's like um, I'm not I'm not fluent in Italian if you haven't noticed. But I do know that unit. It's it's elite mountain troops that have existed forever because Italy's got a lot of mountains and they had just like Switzerland has always had mountain troops. Germany has always had the Austria. Right. You know a lot of those countries have, have elite units that are made and designed and trained to fight in mountainous regions, which is fucking brutal. Right. So those reenactors you saw, I'm pretty sure I know, I have an idea of who might've been there. There's but, probably uh, only a few yeah. in the States. Oh no, I, 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 I know, but like, uh, no. So yeah, that actually, they did wear those in, uh, in okay. combat and oh, they, yeah. I've seen photos of them where it would like in world war two wearing those. They well, they dude, were I, I they were they were they were very yeah. angry at me because uh, I hit them I hit one of them in the head with a mortar, so that was fun. 
Okay. Like a like like Fuck like a, like like, like a project like a sun. Okay, so let me give you some context. <laughs> not not a real mortar, like like a um, a reenactor mortar, which was a Sunny D bottle filled with uh um like a slight weight to it so it actually spit in the air and i nailed sunny d why are reenactors yeah fat? yeah i i well hey dude if you want to know something sunny d fit perfectly in a 60 millimeter motor tube and fly really well sunny d is amazing <laughs> so yeah i'll just go ahead anyway, go ahead with so your story. I, I launched it and i'm dialing it in and these guys are hiding in like a like a like a foxhole shell crater thing at newville and uh I took a shot and I'm getting closer. I'm going closer. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do one more. And I put in the red one, which goes like super far. And I just go, Foom! and I just watch it go. And I'm like, oh, that might be hit. Oh, that might hit. Oh, that might hit. And he's running. He's running like to the foxhole. Like he's trying to make the, make the cut. And the round just goes, bunk, just right off the vulture wing bounces right off. He falls to the ground. He's just like, <laughs> what the, f- what is it? What just hit me? Like, you know, and I'm just like, sorry <laughs> sorry <laughs> like, and he was like what the fuck why are you doing these things but um wow dude. i would have just told him you're ruining my immersion if you said what the fuck why are you hitting me like you're ruining my immersion hey, <laughs> <laughs> but no it's uh, that, that that's what they're portraying and they did exist in world war one world war two caribbean yeah yeah, yeah. they Vietnam, they, like, they, were, know, they were they, they, they were they, they were it's, it was in world war one I, I someday uh sometime i will send you because i can't have many tabs open because my internet's right. shit it's not as shitty as it was no. but i just it's, it's not my internet it's my it's my computer let's be honest we'll, and we'll, so we'll have all the moons aligned and you'll have speeding internet but, but, but right but anyway um no i i have a picture of a guy from that unit in afghanistan in like 2014 wearing that fucking thing on his That's helmet cool. on the set too. Cool too and right? yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. It's like fucking cra- the they black always, fucking. They always just like I was just like what 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 like like cause I was like this can't be either a cheap or b comfortable, but you know, maybe it is. No, it's 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 well, it's again you learn how to use it. It's part of your gear. It's part of your equipment. right. Yeah, uh, I, you know? I can't and imagine it's... any real disadvantage of it. Honestly, I mean, I'm sure it even like will break up your silhouette. Of it. <laughs> right but but it does it's it's that big where it does bring up the silhouette and it's like fucking that's what it was initially back in the day but like nowadays it's kind of more of a symbolic right, yeah. thing but it also again it's pretty hey equipment. going back to what so. mike gay and you said you know it's 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 imposing or right is that the word psychological it is yeah yeah because it makes you look bigger yeah. than what you are yeah i want to fuck with that dude it's with feathers on his cool. head in the desert god yeah. No, I yeah. don't either. Like, <laughs> I'm fuck with that guy. like, no way. Um, yeah, good, good question. Um, any other like gear or anything like that? Questions? You know, I, you know, w- one thing I noticed, and correct me if I'm wrong, I didn't see a main hand grenade, not much hand grenade play in this. Well, which is something you normally was. see in World War One movies. Like, y- you might have missed it, but like, um, yeah, the uh, when they when they did that <laughs> when they did that assault, <laughs> uh, when they did the one assault kind of in the middle of the film um and they sent guys out right after the guys with armor got shot up if i remember correctly yeah. and they, they were throwing grenades up into the machine gun position before the initial assault came on that was kind of wave tactics that were learned through the first world war where you would send like the french did this uh, we ended up doing this the british started doing this where you would send some guys up you give them cover fire or just you know with artillery or whatever and they would ch- chuck grenades at the machine gun positions as many as they could, as fast as they could. When you heard those going off, then the whistle came off. Your first wave would go oh, out. Yeah. And that was mostly riflemen. And the French would do riflemen and they'd do machine gunners, like show show gunners. And they would, the show show gunners would sit in the middle of the field work the, work, and provide work, closer work fire. The LMGs and, and make them, yeah. Right. And so the infantry is moving up. That's kind of the idea of it. Obviously, in this film, it shows that, that didn't work a yeah. lot of times. And it was just a concept that they didn't execute well, or they just they were just doing wave tactics, and it just didn't fucking work. But yeah, so that's they did use grenades in this film. Um, the Italians, just like the rest of the other powers in general in World War One, had so many different models of grenades. Yeah. So I couldn't pinpoint. I couldn't see them first of all, but like I can't tell you what model they would have been using. But they used so many different fucking concept models in the First World War with yeah. grenades. I'm trying to think. Uh... 
Don't hurt I'll yourself, Nick. Not to. You don't want that. <laughs> trying to think. Still trying to figure out how to say V before. Yes, that's you know, why I'm not a. talking. I'm trying to say how to say that word again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, fuck. Oh, God. I, was, I had it in my head. Oh, shit. Her, yeah. Well, I fear I'm cutting all this anyway. So no, it's all it's yeah, all good. Yeah. Like, if, I mean, if that's it, like that's that's a lot of cool things that like maybe people that are listening might not have known, especially about the Italian front, because yeah. that was incredibly fucked up. Like, if you really want to get into it, like look at the glaciers that they lived in with these bridges they built, both the Austro-Hungarians and the Italians in the mountains. It, it they oh, there, so there's some really insane. interesting other movies uh that that are more re, uh, recent in terms of cinema that um whether they're good or not i do not know but i've seen images and clips of them where they've actually showed and conveyed like fort mountain fighting like high up in the mountains like built them yeah. out of stone kind of stuff almost like artillery came and like hit yeah. them kind of thing and them fighting oh, on the okay. tops of the mountain really quick. tops Re- like that Really quick, you, you just you just you just sparked kind of like sure shot almost, you know. So, did you notice how there was a very big lack of artillery? Yes, in this o- film? only on the last um, push was there actually artillery. Right, that's not that's not unrealistic yeah. at all for this front because to get artillery up these fucking mountains, yeah. which they did show, they showed the, that. Yeah, yeah yes, yeah, yeah. and they were just sitting there slogged down because they they mainly had horses and, and manpower. The vehicles aren't going to do shit. Because the tires suck, the transmissions suck. They don't have enough power <laughs> to get that artillery up. That and that was both sides. That wasn't just the Austro-Hungarians or the Italians or the later Germans. At, uh, I, I don't know if I said this earlier, but like at this point in this film, the Germans would have also been arriving at that front uh, in, in small right, numbers. Yeah. But um, nobody could get big artillery. You, you could get like mountain guns, which could be picked up by two or three guys. It would suck, but like, or a donkey or like a horse right, or something, yeah. but you're not going to get anything big out there. And that's why there wasn't this massive artillery barrage yeah, that you it, see it, in the it Western It seemed almost films. like there were like small mortar explosions, you know, it, it, not, not that they were. They were using mortars, like hand hit. Yes, they were. They were. Yep. Right. Yeah. 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 Like it just, it was just very, they, you said they were? They were. Yeah. Yeah, they were. Oh, I they missed, were. missed yep. that. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. And a couple scenes they were using mortars. I don't know. I don't know if that was the correct mortar because I don't actually don't know what mortars the Italians used in the First World War, like the models and everything, yeah, and like whatever. It looked like but, World but War II. But I know, I, right? But but nevertheless, they did use mortars, okay, in mountain fighting because they're, it's a lot easier to get a mortar team up there than it is an artillery piece, you know. And also, the artillery piece you had to bring ammo up there. Ammo is very fucking heavy, and so that's why in this in this particular front, the Asanza front, we'll just call it. There's not as much artillery. There's not nearly as much as artillery as there is on the Western front or the Eastern front. It's, you know, or in Gallipoli or anything like that. Like it's so sparse because they are so far up there and it's just so much manpower and, and time and effort to get one artillery piece up there. And then it's like, well, can they shoot? It's raining up here. It's snowing up here. There's a lot of moisture. Can we re zero? Like, there are a lot of logistical nightmares with artillery up yeah. there. So, yeah. but anyway, yeah, I just, that's a good point. I, I'm glad you brought that up because if people are listening, they were like, well, there wasn't much artillery. Well, no, there wasn't. It wasn't this constant bombardment. That's why they could stick their fucking head up and move around kind of almost freely. So I, it, it, you know, it was without, like those two guys who just got up to cut the wire because they were just like, the whole right. like death or wire happy. You know, that kind of motivation. Right. And also there's no artillery that's gonna yeah. cut them down because yeah, just it's like a machine gun. Yeah. <laughs> right. And yeah. they know that. But so so yeah, that's that's another thing. Um yeah, so that's kinda cool. I I just love that this film actually tackled a front that even to this day is really never or rarely, rarely talked about. I, I think, sorry, excuse me. Let me try that again. No, it's um, all right, dude. I think uh I think the only other movie recently in cinema that kind of targets this is I think a movie called Silent Mountain or Silent Something and apparently it's a it's a hmm. love movie like a like a like a chick flick almost oh, of course. by a war I think if I remember well that's kind of how a very long engagement is where we've got some of the best French western front scenes that I've ever seen in a movie they're very short lived but it's like yeah it's a romance yeah. film 
And, and I'm like, fuck, man, why can't you do this like on a bigger scale? It was insane. I, yeah, because I think in Silent Mountain, it's like uh, I think Sean keeps trying to recommend uh, it to me to watch Fire Away. Um, and I think the clips I've seen, it's like they actually show like like literally like base to base fighting on top of a mountain. Oh, like, Jesus, like, yeah. like, like one higher than the other kind of thing. Like they didn't like they were like, oh. like really intense, like almost like think of it like a naval bombardment almost. Well, it's, it's volley fire yeah, a lot of times. Like 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 they can't get guys over because they're just gonna get cut down instantly. So they're just they're just trying to blast each other out of each forts, but they can't do it with yep. artillery. So they have to do it with like hand grenades and like you know. Well, shit. We should look at that in the future. Maybe have Sean on for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't. That would be cool. Because I don't know if Sean's in. Uh, I look. Sean. Sean's in. Sean is crazy smart when it comes down to like he he's a jack of all trades but he'll dive really hard into that and he's a very he has a very good way of re uh regurgitating is not the right word but i want to say like just a great way he's a great presenter of information that he yeah he can he conveys information very digestible yes. and he, yep. any 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 yes. anyone he really is interested he'll go head in like there was um well let's do it yeah. then let's yeah for for a future like uh not necessarily right now like in the near future but like why don't you figure out what movie he was talking about, Silent Mountain or yeah. whatever? And because again, I want more World War One stuff to be brought up because everybody f- seems to just forget about yeah. it. And most World War One films are dog shit. Yeah. And it might it, it might be a shitty love triangle movie, but at least it might have some really interesting war stuff. Or we t- or or we tear it apart and we you know we do a well or or we just all watch it and go well it doesn't meet the criteria, yeah. but at least we've watched yeah, it, yeah. you know. So or, be, or like, yeah. or we just skip few parts of it, like Sheer Shaw, and just get to the good parts, and then just like, <laughs> like I said too, uh, there for some reason there's like this abundance of PG thirteen World War One movies. I don't get it. It's so weird. Yeah, there, there. It just doesn't seem like was nobody wants to tackle because World War Two is the biggest money maker. Let's be yeah, honest. Yeah. Or was and or it still is, and it's like everybody was concerned about that and blah blah. blah and World War One just kind of gets overlooked a lot as far as 20th century conflicts. Another thing that I'd like to do is, well, actually I did see, oh, I'll bring that up. Um, there was a film we watched in one of my history classes in college that was about the Spanish American war. And it had some actually like familiar actors in it. I can't remember. I bet exactly you there's right probably only like three movies like the, about the Spanish. American. No, it was war. called, um, I- I'll, I'll figure it out later, but like, that would be a cool one because I don't know much about the Spanish American war. I know about some of the gear and everything, but it'd be cool to just pick apart like the kind of plot and everything with that, because I like doing reviews, honestly, like where we don't know much and it, we're like, we're actually dissecting the film and like kind of how it's presented. Um, and that's cool. Like it's because it, with this film, I don't know much about the Italian front. I know a basic level. I know about gear that's consistent with, you know, everything else, but like, it's fun doing things that we don't really know about. And we're, you know, so anyway, uh, off on a tangent, but anyway, uh, so yeah. So how do we want to get into like the, uh, because IMFDB doesn't exist. Do I get into like the overall, or do you guys want to talk about more? Are you talking about land and freedom? No, it's, um, it's, it's something about uh, a friend or, Oh, that's what it's called. It's called Amigo. It's called Amigo. Yeah. It's called Amigo. Yeah. Amigo. That's what it is. Amigo, yeah. uh, uh, span it. I'm gonna say Amigo. I'm gonna say the movie. It wasn't 2010, was it? Yeah, I think it was. Uh oh. Well, this one says the film takes place in the Philippines in 1900 during the Philippine yep. American War. Phil, uh, y- that yes, yeah, that was at right after the Spanish okay, American we War clo- quote we close? unquote ended. I know nothing about that. that no, no, no. But it te- it technically, if you ask people, there's a debate whether it's still the Spanish American War, but it's not technically. But it's the Philippine American. It's it's, it's it started with the Spanish American War. That would have not have happened if it wasn't for the Spanish American gotcha. War. Okay. In the Philippines, but like this was, yeah. So that's correct. It's it's right after. The Spanish kind of fucked off. Oh, it has like yeah. Chris Cooper and yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Huh. It's actually I did not find it that bad when I watched it before. It was also in a college class, so it's like oh, it's got that. It's also got retards. that guy uh, who's in every movie, that skinny guy. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah he was in Road yeah, Trip. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. But he, it's a, it's a really, I think it's cool. Um, would, we'll, we'll bring we that wanna, up in the future. Wanna, it's it's different. Would we want to try? To, I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll talk about it. I'd be up for doing that next. Actually, I don't know what Brian has. In, so the problem is I'm not privy to what Brian has in the in the in the. In the yeah, chamber. no, no, no. He's he's got some things in yeah. the hopper, but like it's good to have more things in the yes. hopper. Because we always do this on the stream or on not on the stream the uh, podcast is like we talk about what we want to do next week. So um yeah we I think that'd be a good one to kind of check out just as far as the because, filmography because the story. it'd be like Civil War but it's not you know what I mean so like it'll scratch right, that itch right. without having it's... to dive into the American history of Civil War so yeah. correct correct so yeah I think that'd be cool. Yeah, um, I'll take a look at. It. All right. Anyway, back to this. Uh, Nate, you got any more things? No, I mean I, I'd be down for. Uh... I think we I think we could wrap it up. I mean, I I I cool. um. Why don't you start uh, out then? Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, like you know, I I I thought it was I was again like I, I stated in the beginning. I think is you know like on generally act. I was very pleasantly surprised by by the quality of this film, and you know, I I I wasn't um. The 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 lulls for me were not from the movie. It was the way I watched it. And I think I need to go back mm -hmm. and uh, give it uh, a proper watch. I think I'm going to pay the two dollars for Prime in the next couple of days and, and do yeah, that. Worth yeah. it. Yeah, I, I try to get around it like you always do, and you know I thought I oh, I yeah. really need to. I think I want to actually do it for real. So I I I'm, I'm going to do that, and uh, so I'm not going to judge it on that uh, of me being distracted by you know things around me and stuff like that during not having subtitles and things like that. I thought the acting. Uh, the the emotions seem to be conveyed through the dub at least you know like mm -hmm. uh yeah. uh you know the the actual um acting and the way the lines seem to have be delivered in a physical presence uh mattered and i think that works well um i thought the physical i keep doing that practical effects are were really really good um you know there was you know some 1970s flailing of the arms and falling down but for the most part you know it worked pretty well i thought the for the uniforms to my untrained eye were nailed down the equipment was nailed down and now after talking to mike they were so you know it's 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 really good i mean i i was pleasantly surprised by this i was engaged and um it definitely gives you like a, i think what we always say it's like you know it gives you uh a, a way to kind of re to start the path of researching this conflict on your own you know dive into it if you you know if you're yep. really interested really dive into it and it's a great launching point it's not hyena road to learn about the afghan war because if you do that you deserve nope 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 <laughs> i'm stay sorry 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 i got i got angry stay on target i got angry i got angry i got angry sorry <laughs> he's yeah, yeah. angry um don't do that don't do that don't I, the, no just <laughs> just just stay away from that um uh yeah, no, it's a fantastic uh, movie to launch yourself into research. And I think it, and even then, I think to my untrained eye, it seemed very accurate and a good representation of the era. Uh, I I'm, I'm going to give this, I'm going to give this a nine screaming Mel Gibson's out of 10. Mm. I'm only not going to get, and, and, and a 10 has to be, you know, price mel gibson actually screaming but you know it's 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 uh no it's it's it was it was really good i really enjoyed it um it was a pleasant gem and very unexpected and was really really cool uh mike a goo yeah um so yeah i uh i, I love the like i said i love the atmosphere i love the feel of everything obviously i like the messages and all that the way it's conveyed um i want to watch it again though so I can have an even more solid opinion on it. But um, yeah, I, I thought it was very well done. I th like the subtle way of the way everything's done in this movie. Again, I say that's the way I want to see a lot of most war movies. I don't like them when they're over the top or cliched and all this stuff. I like them when they're more subtle and like, you know, just raw like that. And um, so that obviously I liked a lot of uh, liked it a lot in that sense. Um I thought the actors were all did a really good job. I thought the characters were all really interesting. And um, yeah, it's just, a, it's one of those gems that you just, you know, nobody fucking knows about, but uh, hopefully now people will that we're talking about it, I guess. Um, 
you know, one of those obscure things that uh, hopefully has some kind of resurgence uh, in, in uh, you know, the near future. So a uh, really good movie. Check it out. I would probably, I'm going to give it a uh, 7.5 out of 10. Yeah. Um, yes. Same thing. It's um, the acting I thought was not overdone. It's so easy to do in a war film. No matter what time period it is, it's so easy to overact. And I think the acting was actually pretty spot on. And the, like you said, the atmosphere, um, just the way everything kind of molded. There was a story that you could follow. It wasn't boring. Um, yet it wasn't like over the top, like action, you know, movie. It was just like, well, oh shit, we have to go to the action again. But like, you know, you can kind of, you can kind of sense the stress of the people that are involved. And yeah, the uniforms and the gear, to my knowledge, I'm sure somebody will know more, but like, wasn't bad. It wasn't as, it wasn't so egregious. There were a couple of VZ 24s that I saw were some extras in the, some of the battle scenes, whatever I can let that go because the rest of the film and the screaming seventies, like, ah, turning around, twisting die. Here's the thing is I can let that shit go as long as the rest of it's really good and delivers. And this did. Um, and so, yeah, it's, Overall, yeah, again, it's a hidden gem. It's I didn't know about this, and Brian brought this up. And it's like, yeah, he got it. I think he got this from Sean. Was this through Sean? And Maybe this is the one Sean kept trying to get us to watch. Who knows? Might yeah. have been. But, like, yeah, it, dude, it's a good recommendation. It's uh, it, it actually followed through, and it was like, again, 1970? I'm like, what the fuck? How did they get it this, you know, but it's a foreign film. Again, I'm American, so it's foreign to me. Um, but that might be why. And they tried their best to get it as accurate as possible from what I can see, especially 1970. And yeah, just, it was very relatable and really enjoyable to watch and refreshing because it wasn't your cliche fucking war movie. And they put a lot of attention to detail, even at that point. So I'm actually giving this a nine out of 10 as well. Cool. So it's a nine out of 10 because there, I mean, I can't give it a 10 because there are some things that are whatever, but like, that's only one point off. So I actually really enjoy this. Just kind of like an ungenerally act. We always come back to that one. And now I think this is another part of the litmus test. You know, when we refer back to what we think are good war films, I think this is going to be an ungenerally act. And then, you know, this yeah. film. So, yeah, yep. yeah, I, I agree. The, um, the average tonight comes out to 8.5. Um, I don't nice. know if that's the highest. Uh, I don't think, it's 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 up I think there it's with very the, much some up of the there. other ones. I think it's up there with ungenerally act and uh, and uh, when that shakes the barley. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, there there there's some like that's the thing with this with this podcast. I love is like it's our opinions, of course. Everybody's opinions are different, but like there are certain films that like, well, all the films we give it their fair trial. Yeah, yes, trial by fire. And if we don't like it, we don't like it. We would explain why. If we do, we explain why. And so you guys kind of get our cadence that are listening, but uh, yeah, cool. Yeah. So. And, 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 and to kind of chime in what you said, it's like, you know, even the, the things that are, you know, wrong or egregious, or maybe we don't like, they don't detract from the whole no. film. Correct. You know, it's, they're very forgivable, yeah. very like, forgivable. Like Mamma Mia <laughs> music. <laughs> yeah that, <laughs> like, that, that that's like that's, that's part of that like, point like, that, you know yeah. yeah it's does it distract me yes yep. but it doesn't bring down my my score which is a nine you know right uh do the yep. flailing arms you know distract from the score or distract me from the overall me liking the movie no because it's part of the era same no. thing with the music you know the, so it's the, like the frankenstein yeah. schwartz loose you know that's uh yeah, yeah like like we, we how long did we spend on that like 20 minutes like dissecting what the fuck that thing is but yeah. like but, but it's, we at least we at least we could figure out what the fuck they tried to right. do and that they actually did it the best right. they could and it's like okay it's not that yeah. bad and, so, and, and you yeah. know it's like again it's like you think about it, it's like they weren't expecting people 52 years later to dissect frame by frame of a of something that wasn't even a concept for them to be able to ever think about you yeah. know the fact that we're sitting here frame by frame watching because the, the concept of pausing your project frame by frame was not even con conscious no no, no. alien yeah yeah so so like so if you think about yeah. it like the goal to, to to convince someone for the what the five seconds it's on screen that's real if that and yeah. then for, and for right. them to have to improve that they have to go back and go pay another ticket and go back and watch it again like you know it's you know it right. works 
it works yeah. so it well, doesn't detract from yeah. our scores you that's know? a funny thing is that you, you couldn't freeze frame back then because if you stopped the film the fucking light would have burnt the film <laughs> right you know? yeah, yeah yeah right 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 <laughs> yep. yep yep you just said uh, maybe yeah. maybe you so. could have sat there and like taken a picture you know if like a film negative on your camera in the right. theater and that probably the only way you could actually like sit down and but then and, you have to go to have it develop yeah, you get the flash yeah, and, yeah you get developed yeah you have, to, you have the flash and everybody's like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> please get out of the yeah i hear nerd <laughs> and then it, like maybe it turned out maybe it right. didn't because of the flash right. and the fucking contract <laughs> yeah you get lucky but yeah it's so yeah but um no i that that's another thing that i took in consideration is like the time it was made and does it does it resonate? Okay. Does it, it resonates with the, we didn't even get into because we already kind of discussed this, like the, the horseshit leadership of that and which we already discussed on past glory, but it was, it was conveyed very well. And it's a very consistent theme in this film, which yeah, I thought is timeless because that does not change it. Well, in my experience, it's, like when yeah. I was in it, it does it, not change. It seems to be the common you know? theme. Yeah. Yeah. And with, with Vietnam movies and stuff like that. So yeah, I like that it hit, a bunch of good points and whatever so yeah anyway that was a great watch i actually enjoyed watching that and yeah i'm gonna definitely never forget yeah. this so yeah yeah i'm, I'm gonna right. be recommending guys... this to people for world war one movies oh yeah. for sure uh yep yeah. and so uh you guys got anything else uh no i think that's it no all right I'll go ahead and uh, see us out so thank you for listening to this episode of scuttlebutt and uh appreciate you listening and we'll see you on the next episode. Fuck you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> it goes both ways. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to leave a rating. Otherwise, Mel Gibson won't stop screaming. If you like this content, make sure to check out our Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram pages. If you want to directly support our work, make sure to check out our Patreon. All these links are in the description below. Until the next time, Scuttlebutt out.